Hi, welcome to another video. So, OpenAI has launched their new AI browser called ChatGPT Atlas. This is a Chromium-based browser that is tightly integrated with ChatGPT. It is currently only available for Mac, which can be a bummer for some, but I'll try to go through all the features and how you can use it if you want to. To install it, you'll have to head on over to chatgpt.com slash atlas, and then you'll find this page, and it will allow you to download the browser. This is free for all basic and chat-related features. Once you install it, you'll be asked to sign in with your ChatGPT account. You can do that, and then you'll get some options, which include the option to import data from another browser, which you can do. Then, if you want to enable memories for the browser, then you can do that or skip it like I do here. And then you get the option where it asks you to set the browser as default, which gives you extended limits to all the features for seven days. I did it here because I don't really have a chat GPT subscription. Now, this is what opens up. First of all, make sure that you go to the settings here and then in the data control. You can go to the Improve model for everyone option and disable it. This way, your data will not be used for training. It is enabled by default, which is a bad move. Anyway, this is the main page. Here, you can type in your questions, add files, create images, and so on and so forth, as you basically already do in ChatGPT. You can also do speech-to-speech -speech talk, the interface of tabs and stuff is pretty slick here, not gonna lie. On par with Dia, it's actually extremely similar to Dia in a ton of ways. So, there are two kinds of modes. There's a general chat mode, and there's a non-chat, agentic mode that can do tasks for you. If you've used a browser like Dia, which is something that I almost use daily, it gives you an option to basically go to any page and then chat with AI with the context of the page. This is one of the only features that I use Dia for. It's such a good option, because if you want to understand something on a page, like a research paper, then it can help you out. Comet never really worked for me. Its agent system was not good for anything for me, and wasn't great at all. Anyway, so that is what you can do here as well. You can go to any page and then ask it to summarize anything and then use it for summarization, understanding something on the page. This is a super good option and I use it very often. One feature that I use in the Dia browser a lot is the skills option, which allows you to basically save prompts as slash commands that you can mention in the chat and use it to do some simple flows. Like, you can create a skill for writing a tweet about a research paper or find interesting video topics from a page and similar things. It's a really great option. Comet doesn't have this, and OpenAI's browser also doesn't have this. In Dia, you can also customize the system prompt and stuff, and I have a lot of things dialed in there. It's one of the tools, after Obsidian, that had me really hooked but OpenAI's counterpart doesn't have that, which makes me not switch to it yet. That is actually mostly it, because the ChatGPT features are the same as in ChatGPT's interface. Here, it also does the same thing. One thing that they told is that its search interface is cleaner now. So, if you ask it something like, what's the sentiment around one battle after another movie? Then it will go ahead and generate a response with GPT-5 with search and tell you about whatever it is. You can also sift through the search results through the tabs at the top, like images, videos, and stuff like that as well. It's pretty good. It's a bit slicker and less ad-hungry than Google. But obviously the search engine of OpenAI won't be as good as Google. So, more in-depth research still needs to be there for me. This is still good for quick question and answer things about like a tool, a code snippet, medicine, 
or something along those lines. There's also the agent mode that can do stuff for you, but it's pretty slow. And it isn't something that I'd recommend anyone to use it for. Adding products to a shopping cart is not a good tutorial for such stuff. So, yeah, I've tested it. I wouldn't recommend you to use it, and it's also only available on the Pro plan. So, yeah, it's nothing extraordinary. I mean, even they didn't have any example for it, apart from adding products to cart. Who even does that? I may get it for doing data entry, but that isn't as good either. Anyway, one more thing is that it can do inline edits. This feature doesn't seem to be available for me yet, but it can apparently help you write emails, which is something that Gmail and most mailing software now already has, and Dia Browser also has. So, yeah, that is mainly it for now. Now, what do I think about this browser? Well, it's nothing special. For my tasks, I still prefer the Dia Browser. You can customize it, build skills, and much more useful stuff. However, this is missing many of those things. One of the major things that it is missing just as a browser is the Profiles feature where you can make different browser profiles for different work and keep sessions bifurcated, but it seems to not have it at all. But I may be wrong. Dia has it on the face, but this doesn't have that, which is interesting. And it makes sense because it is fully governed by your chat GPT account and nothing else. Also, they seem to have fully removed the Chromium internal settings page, and the inspect element of pages also open like a pop-up, and you can't really fix this via any option that I can see. So, there are some really big rough edges to this. So, yeah, it is nothing extraordinary. There are browsers like this that are far better already existing out there. I won't be switching, and will stick with Dia, as that's faster. AI features are pretty fleshed out, and it just works well. They should have just acquired Dia instead of Atlassian acquiring them. But yeah, this is nothing great or extraordinary. Very mid-launch and mid-product. That is about it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.